Okay, we are live. Great. Welcome everybody to the um, August 2nd meeting of the facility subcommittee. I'm um, call the meeting to order at 804. Um, I'm on my phone, so I'm looking to, well, let's see, so where's the agenda here? Um, uh, do you wanna to move to approve the agenda, Julie? Uh, yes, I will. Okay, I'll second I'll the agenda is approved. Um, do you wanna to move to approve the minutes? Yes, I will approve, uh, move to approve the minutes. Okay, I'll second that and that's approved. Um, I only see Stephanie Allen here in the public. Um, Stephanie, if you're here for public comment, um, feel free to raise your Zoom hand, otherwise we'll move to the discussion. And Ty, for the purposes second. of clarity on the minutes, can you correct that, that the uh, that we're starting the meeting at 5.04? I know you're traveling right now. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, 5.04, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, I can't see, is, is, is um, She does not have her hand up. Okay, great, thank you. All right, now we'll move to the first item then, which is um, a bunch of presentations John, so I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Give me one minute and I will screen share. So it's actually one, doing that, it's one presentation oh. um, with all of these items. And I believe we might've captured them a little bit out of order. So if that's the case, I do apologize, um, but we'll just go through it here. So, um, Hang on, that's not, there we go. Uh, we wanted to talk about John Muir dry rot repair. This is an upcoming project. Uh, Wait, John, member... John, can I interrupt you for one second? Sorry. Please. Um, I just, since members of the public can't always, can't see necessarily who else is here, just sort of for the record and for Stephanie's information, there's only one member of the public here and it's, it's Stephanie. Go ahead, John. Okay, uh, making a recommendation from facilities to the subcommittee and then hopefully the board regarding the Milvia Street project. Um, we wanna talk about a new CTE project at BHS to support the advanced manufacturing pathway. Um, Oxford, site, Oxford site, excuse me, the next steps and the funding opportunities. We've talked a little bit about this to the board, but we're gonna just dive a little bit deeper in. Um, BHS Community Theater, um, Berkeley Community Theater, we had an opportunity uh, for the performer support space. And really it was an opportunity to, to capture a savings of over a million dollars. And then Oregon and Russell Street complex uh, hardening the facility. So jumping right in, um, John Muir dry rot repair. One of the projects that's listed on our infrastructure and it's very high on the needs list is to protect the building envelope, that exterior shell. And it's overdue for a paint job uh, and that absolutely protects it. We started looking at it and what we're finding is a lot of dry rot, particularly on the Southern and Western elevations of the building. Um, and these need to be repaired. So we, we're gonna be bringing a contract to the board for access building on, they're a building envelope consultant. We use them over at Longfellow to do some destructive testing. And we'll be recommending to conduct a review of the building envelope conditions with them. Um, following that, there will be a subsequent contract or a contract amendment, possibly with access for design uh, uh, and construction administration of how do we fix that. So we need that uh, investigative work to happen. And then once the evaluation and design is completed and the repair work is done, then we can go to the original project, which is repainting the building. Um, um, John, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, can you go back? Yeah. Um, just in the sense of access is going to be recommended to conduct a review. Do we put that out to bid? Could you talk a little bit about how, how is it that they're, that they're being recommended? What's the process? Yeah, so it's much like an RFP. It's based on best value uh, because they're a consultant. While they're actually doing some investigative work, they're a design consultant as well. Um, we've put this out before for Longfellow as well as other projects. There's not a lot of companies that do this work, but the companies that we have partnered with traditionally, Access has really proven to be our best option, which is why we're recommending to oh, you. We don't have, did we already put it out to bid? Do we have to put it out to bid? No, it's, it's it, again, it's because they're a consultant, it's treated as a best value. It's not a hard bid where there's public, there's no public contract code with bidding laws associated with it. 
Okay, I'm not sure I understand the difference of a consultant and um, it's kind of like it's kind of like when we hire. No, it's a good question, right? It's kind of like when we hire an architect, or even when we do a lease lease back versus a lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. So the architects uh, lease lease back, they're based on best value. And I and I correct myself. I've said RFP. It's actually RFQ. We send out these requests for qualifications. We read through their qualifications. The price typically comes. So the, so the RFI or the RFQ, the RFQ yeah. is not tied to a particular project. It's like we have a vendor pool that we yeah. use. Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. That's, okay, perfect. That's that's what I needed to understand. Okay. So no they problem. are Sorry. they're in our vendor pool that have already qualified in that sense. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Sorry if I wasn't clear. Thank you. Um, recommendations for the Milvia Street project. This is a little bit. Um, I have to swallow a little bit of pride on here, but I, I do want to be very honest with the group. You know, in December, it was put in front of us that we had to close plant ops on Oregon and Russell. And in the middle of doing that, facilities felt that we really needed to find a quick solution. Um, and I think there was a little bit of pressure, but I think some of that pressure we created as well, because we knew that while we were looking for the short term solution, which we were, we also needed to find a permanent solution. Um, we vetted out with the subcommittee and with the board our options as we saw them. The most economical option was to actually incorporate plant operations into Milvia Street. The board, Julie, you as well, and I believe Ty, you guys raised concerns around Milvia Street putting plant ops there as the environment, the impact to the community itself, the impact to the bikeway, et cetera, but it was still board approved. Now, as we've begun to do that work and actually begin the investigative work that's needed for CEQA and everything else, and had a lot more consultation with our legal team, what we're learning is that the CEQA challenges to put plant ops on Milvia Street will be so great. In addition to anticipated possible community litigation, the belief, the consensus is really that it's gonna shut down the project for 10 years or more that it's gonna land us in, in court. We're gonna spend a lot of money trying to make this project happen as opposed to building the project that we so desperately need there, which really is the parking structure for our VHS staff, as well as the tennis courts. So it's, it's, with the, it's the recommendation of the facilities department to really say, we, we recognize that this is not the permanent long-term fix. We wanna pull it from there. I don't want to give you a new recommendation. I want to go back and spend some really good time with my team trying to figure out other options for the long-term solution of plant ops. But in the interim, move forward with the original project, which is the BHS tennis courts with the parking structure. Thanks, John. Uh, do you want, can you just unshare your screen for a sec? Sure. One second. There we go. Um, uh, well, and just like as a little, I mean, we're all, we were all here, I think, but just as a little bit of framing, we asked you, you, Ray, you surfaced these likely concerns last time we met, which was in the beginning of the summer. And, and Julie and I asked you to, you know, to look into it more and come back to us now and give us your recommendation, which, you know, which you're now giving us. So um, it's not like this is the first time we've, we've heard this and, and, um, and so appreciate you, you know, looking more into it over the summer and coming to this conclusion. I guess my question is, um, what's your thought about how to bring this to the board? Does the board need to um, undo what we did? We do. I, I think we should just for the purposes of memorializing that, right? Because right now the project sits with a much higher budget to incorporate plant ops. And I think what we should be doing is being very clear to the board as well as the community of, look, we heard you. We also did some more research. We wanna remove plant ops from this, keep alignment with the original project um, and facilities will continue to work to try to find a long-term solution. Yeah, and um, I have a question for Julie in a second, but, um, and importantly, uh, we in the community have to understand that there, there's finding another place for plant ops is, is uh, an expensive um, but necessary, um, you know, project that that may not happen right away because we don't have a great solution. But we need to we need to allocate a significant chunk of the bond money now to do that. We've allocated, I think, 
was it thirty million dollars to the Novi Street project? Yeah. So we've sort of accounted for that. But if the if the whatever we end up with costs significantly more than that, that's going to impact our ability to do other projects that are important and that the community might be expecting it. So there may be some people who are. Um, you know, pleased that we're not doing this in Millia Street and it seems like a, the right decision, um, but that does have some real negative impacts on the rest of the bond, you know, resources. And that, and we should be really, I think, clear and upfront about that and make sure we, we you know, keep that in mind when we're allocating unallocated funds in the bond. I, my question for Julie was um, whether, I mean, ultimately it's up to, the superintendent and the president and the vice president how to agendize this for the board meeting. Um, Julie did or John, did you did you, either of you have a recommendation that we want to give to the superintendent about um, you know should how to agendize this? Should this be do you want to do a presentation at the board similar to this? Do you want to um, just have a information item one meeting and then put it on consent at the next meeting? I I personally think if, it, if it's okay, I'll jump right in. I think with as much publicity as this got, um, I think we should own the fact that, you know what, or I should own the fact that we had the opportunity to go back to do the research we heard the community. I think it's really a short five minute, five slide type of presentation, but where we basically make the recommendation to the board and we ask the board to vote on that. I don't know that it's necessarily a two board item item, okay. <laughs> right? Uh, but at the same time, I have a meeting with Anikia this Friday, and this is one of my things to discuss with her. Okay, so I guess, Julia, I just jumped in. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I guess the question that I have was the same question. I, I, I really appreciate um, the change in, in or the shift in, in direction around it and the work that you guys, that staff, that John, you and, and folks have done around this project. Um, and want to know whether if it's, I, I don't have the agenda in front of me, if this is um, information or action, if we want to actually move to um, accept the recommendation and have the facilities committee kind of like move it forward as a recommendation of the facilities committee. Um, and I'd like to make sure that in the presentation that we do is that there's at least one um, slide information on the importance of plant ops and that we yeah. need to address it, whether it's, you know, building on Oregon or you know securing another location that it's not an option not to move forward on plant ops it's just this isn't the right location for it right and as far yeah. as how it's agendized today I apologize full transparency no. Carol is on vacation I did this so it's not agendized John, right it, it just says discussion it, it's not no, an it's fine John it's fine it's fine we can just give the direction it doesn't mean anything for us to take action because we're only two members of the board anyway really so julie and i can give direction to send this on to the board and you can represent that you know we both are in support of this and and i really agree with and i'm sure you do too with what julie just said about the importance of mm -hmm. finding a solution so it's fine for you to represent in that third direction right julie yep okay um that's great. Anything else on this, Julie? So I guess my only question, John, is if um, knowing that we don't have tons of options, um, are you thinking of having somebody look more closely at Oregon Street about what it would take to to put a plant ops there? And uh, since you have been beating the bushes for, you know, real estate for eons, I've been looking for real estate since I got here. So coming up on four years. Um, yeah, we had a master plan done there, but it was several years ago. Um, but it was also, I don't know that the program in that, I, part of that programming was to keep Oregon and actually turn it into workforce housing at the time and things. So I think it might be worth going back out to talk to our consultants, to talk to our designers, to see who we envision to bring in, to really take a deep dive and give us a good engineer's estimate based on a basis of design um, to understand what we can and can't do there and what it's going to cost us. Well, and if, you know, depending on the square footage that we need or the footprint that we would need for a plan ops, you know, the design could address the fact that you don't have to take up the whole footprint of the property if that's not what you need. 
we do just from a parking perspective alone. Well, again, I'm not saying we don't. The assessment yeah. could be how much of the footprint do you need to actually, I mean, that could be part of the equation that you look at. Yeah, one of the challenges, just so you know, that was in the original master plan was that they they wound up using the whole footprint, but it's still only allocated for the 45 vehicles or so of district vehicles. And the city of Berkeley, because of the type of operation this is, is going to look for us to not only house the district vehicles, but also the staff vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely going to be a challenge in design. We have some creative ideas that we've already kicked around over here um, to try to work around that, though. Well, and I think we need to think about what's the equation. It's not a one-to-one -one staff mm -hmm. to car. So it's like working with the city on what the equation would be, Yeah. what the formula would need to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. All right. All yeah, right. thanks, John. Um, yeah, so Back proceed. In. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, hang on one second, it's not. Okay, uh, new CTE project at uh, BHS, the Advanced Manufacturing Pathway. Um, you may recall that in the bond planning, we set aside a $2 million tranche every two years for CTE, and CTE is really good about capturing all the grants and any other funds and doing fundraising to also contribute to that. Um, I've met with Wynn, and really the project that they're desperately in need of right now is their advanced manufacturing pathway, which typically deals with robotics and machining. There's this tremendous call for it. There's a tremendous call from our community partners for it, um, but we don't have the space. So we're looking to build out G107 and G109. Wynn has already been in consultation for the last year plus with the high school administrative team about that space. It is allocated for CE. Um, and right now we're, um, excuse me, budget will be approximately 2 million of the $21 million that's planned for CTE total. And that $21 million is representative of not only the bond allocations, but also any previous money, as well as anticipated CTE grants that would come in. So, is this where the robotics is now? Is that just, I'm getting my frame of reference. It is, it's the old Berkeley Media, I think Yeah, Berkeley Community Media, okay. Yeah, but it's, it, the space is in desperate need of a lot more. So to really- So are we and, going to, ex, are we gonna build out into greater space or use the footprint of those two classrooms? We'll be working within the footprint of those two classrooms, but there's a lot of demising walls and a lot of space that's really not used the right way now. And there's also, it's not just robotics, but it is machining. Um, I know I had a great conversation with Stephanie Allen about this as well. We have so many community partners who are really just looking to hire machinists and they can't find them. Right. So it's a great addition. Uh, it's already there with CTE, but it's a great improvement upon this. So. Great, thanks. John, um, John, what's the, wait, oh, is there more on, the, I was gonna ask a question about CTE real quick. Please. Um, uh, Two questions. What's the what's the timeline like on when it'll be completed, and will the um, current robotics will the um, you know program be disrupted in any way by the construction? Yeah, it's a great question, and the answer is it's too early to say. Win and I had a very general conversation. The next step is to choose from our architects pool of who the right architect is for this, and we already have some ideas internally. We're going to bring that to the board. Um, for a very early contract with them, which will lead to a scoping meeting. And that scoping meeting will actually determine everything that needs to be done, as well as timelines. We'll try to do a lot of this work as a summer sprint project so that there is uh, minimal impact, but it's, it's so early to say that. Um, also, since we're talking about CTE, I don't know if we want to go out of order from public comment, Ty, but I know Stephanie Allen has raised her hands and she's definitely. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Why don't we why don't we promote her or okay. let her speak somehow? Great. Can I ask you a quick question while you pump that uh, bring her up is um, does part of the bond pay for the machinery that we need to use to equip like the hard, the, the big machine stuff or not the not the. Um, it, it can, depending upon, right, it, it absolutely can pay for that FF&E. Uh, now, depending upon what the project budget works out to be and what the build costs are, determines how much we're able to budget for FF&E. But Wynn has been amazing just over the years between his grants and his fundraising efforts as well to really help offset that. Well, so I'm just at the $2 million 
is that for just the construction and des the design and construction and not the FF&E? No, that total $21 million budget. No, the $2 million. The $2, the $2 million. million can go, it can be used for anything we want, but it's part of that $21 million, which is for all construction and all FF&E. Okay, but we're only allocating, or we're only right now designating $2 million for this particular project. So what I'm trying to just ask, does that $2 million include, F or you don't have a full-blown, I see Shanita's nodding her no. head. So we it's inclusive we, we, of the ff &E or the machining equipment we need for the, the class. It should be, but until we have the scoping meeting with the okay. design team, with Wynn and with his teachers, it's, it would be so presumptuous of me to actually answer that. Okay, well, would it be like, if it's not, do we go for 3 million or 2.5? Yeah. We would just up it. Correct, yeah. Okay. This is just like many projects that we bring to the board, we say, we're looking to put this project on. This is what we're thinking the allocation is. And if it turns out to be more, or turns out to be less, we bring that back to the board and explain the why. Okay. Um, Stephanie, did you have a comment, question? You're on Stephanie, mute. Stephanie, you're muted. Hmm. <laughs> just, I'm sorry, I apologize for interrupting. Just two That's okay. questions. Um, first, I want to thank John, who has championed our use of this space. Uh, you know what a premium space is at Berkeley High, and a lot of people wanted it. So I really appreciate John's support on this. Uh, very quickly, uh, we are going to need this coming school year to write the curriculum. Um, and our two partners in this are uh, East Bay Mud and essentially Laney. And we're anticipating that we may continue to get some equipment donations from both of them, as well as their participation in helping design the shop and determine what equipment is needed for it. And the last thing I wanna say is that this will be an extension of the robotics mechatronics program. And it feeds into both engineering as well as machining. Um, and it's been a pressure point from our advisory board partners for the last three years. Uh, so we have a lot of interest and a lot of support from a lot of outside agencies for this uh, project. Thank you. Well, Stephanie, you. before you get off, thank you for all your work. You and Wynn have done a, an amazing job. He knows how to raise money. <laughs> um, and you know how to spend it. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. It's always good to take a minute to thank you for everything you, you've done for the CT program in the USC. Um, uh, so thanks, Stephanie, thanks for being here. And no offense, but we're going to demote you back to participant now. I'm fine. Okay. Done. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, all right. Uh, go ahead, John. Yeah. So uh, next conversation is just Oxford Elementary School, uh, not talking about West Campus, but the original campus. Um, there is some opportunity, although we're coming up on the edge of this. I Honestly, I had an epiphany about Oxford a couple of weeks ago realizing that even though we closed it, we may qualify for some seismic mitigation funding. Um, so we're actually starting conversations now with the Office of Public School Construction to see if we can capture any of that money, even though we're in the 7-Eleven process right now, The seven, or we're gonna be going in the 7-Eleven process. The 7-Eleven process won't impact their decision. It's more about since we move the school, can we capture the funding? The way you, the regulations and the IRs read on this is it's a little bit of a gray area. But prior to that landslide deformation report that triggered the relocation of the school, right, the project was planned to upgrade structural seismic elements of the facility. And with what we've gotten from the landslide deformation, that changes it from a voluntary to a mandatory upgrade. So since it's mandatory, we should be able to capture that or at least go after that money. Um, so, John, I, I don't understand. Are you talking about funding to rebuild the school or yeah. funding that we're eligible for that could go back into capital projects elsewhere? The latter, right? So it's the OPSC will view it, uh, Office of Public School Construction will, be, will view it as the funding 
or a piece of the funding that would be needed to rebuild that school, but there's no requirement that we use it in that way. Because we've already modernized um, West Campus for Oxford, what we may be able to do is, and we'll use an arbitrary number here of $20 million, but if we capture that 20 million, that would go into Fund 30, which in turn we would repay Measure I, the 20 million that it's spent on West Campus. Regardless of what it looks like on the accounting end, it puts us in a plus of 20 million or, or 15 million, or whatever that number is. So we wanna meet with OPSC and uh, Van Pelt is, uh, Jennifer Gibb from Van Pelt is working on setting up that meeting. We've already had a conversation with HY Architects who was the original designer for Oxford, for the Oxford um, modernization. They're on board to help with this if we're gonna pursue this. Um, and then based on what OPSC says, if they tell us to go for it, we will likely be bringing a contract to the board to contract. So, so can I just be really clear? I'm sorry. So when we say HY Architects coming on to do, this is not to do architectural work for the for the old site. It is. So let me let me stop sharing. Uh, I, I have a little nervousness around setting an expectation with the community that mm -hmm. we're doing architectural work to rebuild the school when we're not. Yeah. So what what's required when you go after seismic mitigation, and this is what we're doing with the Little Theater right now, if you recall, is we actually, besides for the plans, the 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 the, the blueprints that we would have to actually use to build the project, we have to create what's called a dummy set of plans to do the bare minimum of all of the structural work and all of the earthwork that it would take to rebuild that school and hold that hill back submit it through DSA, the state architect for approval, then send it over to the Office of Public School Construction, where they use a calculated formula for each discipline to determine the amount of funding that's available. So we can be very clear and we should be very clear in our messaging if we do this, that you know whatever based on whatever the 711 committee were to decide, it's not our intent to rebuild Oxford at 1130 Oxford Street. This is more about capturing state funding because of the hardship that was imposed upon the district by the landslide defamation report. So it could potentially be articulated as a way to reimburse the modernization at yes. West Campus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even though it's doing plans for something we're not going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's, a, it's a great We would be up front with the state about it. Say that again, Ty. I'm sorry. Well, and we and we we would be upfront about that with mm -hmm. with the state and only Absolutely. go forward if the state said, "Yeah, go for it." Is that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So I I hear your point, Julian. It's a good point, and we will absolutely be very clear in the messaging around this if we bring it to the board. Our first step is to have the meeting with OPSC to see where the, what they say on this. We've already talked to Matt Petler over at Facilities School Consultants. Um, because he is really sort of the expert. We're using him with the Little Theater as well. So should the state tell us to move forward, we'll be bringing him on along with HY. Yeah, just, I mean, I, I love looking for money. So that part I think is really good. But the Little Theater we're using, you know, and it, right. so that, that's, I think it's, it's making sure that we're transparent with the state so we don't get ourselves in a, a sticky wicket. But it's also being very clear with the community that, it's kind of a way to get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that we have any intent to rebuild the school. Right. Okay. okay. So um, let me go back to sharing. Based on what you just said about love looking for money, I think you'll like this next one. Um, so we'll talk about this, but I'll talk about how we're doing it first. So we've been working on funding applications for several years. Um, the Office of Public School Construction released a tranche for Berkeley Unified School District of applications that we had submitted about two weeks uh, in the tune of $28 million. So we have that reimbursement money coming in. It's currently at the state controller's office. We're waiting for it to be processed. We anticipate that that will be coming back into the coffers here in the next few weeks. That money is very restricted. It goes into fund 30 and it can only be reused or it can only be used to refund fund 21 or to fund 21. Um, so with that, it's $28 million that we've captured 
that we're now seeing come down from what we call the workload list to continue to support our capital project endeavors. Um, with that, one of the things, and the timing was really good on this, um, earlier in the year in the chaos of what was this year, we saw an opportunity at the Berkeley Community Theater and we jumped on it. In the original designs of the Berkeley Community Theater, while we're doing the classroom wing and the stage box, the entire basement level underneath the stage was not scheduled for any work. And that includes all the infrastructure work that would have been required to build out the performer support space and other ancillary spaces downstairs. Um, we ran a quick cost analysis on this. And what we saw was we were able to do this right now during this work for about 1.75 million. And if we chose to wait and do this later, it would have cost us close to 3 million while we were doing the little theater. Plus we would have had to have shut down the stage box again, which would have been really, it would have hurt the school programmatically. So at the next board meeting, we often do program budget updates. We're gonna be bringing an update. We'll show the $28 million allocation coming in from the state, but we are gonna show a $1.75 million adjustment to the Berkeley Community Theater budget um, because it was the right thing to do. This was a decision that we had to make and we made it just based on the savings that we can capture. So it was really about an opportunity. And Julia, any questions? On that or? Yeah, I, uh, just a clarifying. So um, this is not part of the A building renovation because you're saying the community theater. It's part of the A building renovation. The A building, okay, not the renovation of the bowl and the little theater. No, this work was originally, the way the, pro, the way the project was originally designed, and I didn't catch it during design, but the way the project was originally designed, the architect anticipated doing this work while doing the little theater. The problem was, was one, we would have to close that stage box, the main stage again, to do all of this work because it was structural. But two, we already had all of the concrete slabs ripped up we had all of the floors excavated. We had this wide open space. So John, with the A building, we didn't do the stage box with the A, A building, did we? We did, yeah. So Just we're doing, as part of this project, okay. A building, it's the classroom wing and the stage box. And the stage box. Okay, cool. I get it. So I would just say when you bring it back, make sure you, you say the A building renovation and not just the community theater because it shows the urgency of doing it now. Sure, okay. Cool. Um, and then I think this is the last, but it's about hardening the facility at Oregon and Russell. So I met with security experts that were sent over from ASKIP, our insurance provider. And now that that building is empty, um, it's, you know, even when it was occupied, it was already a target for vandalism and, and uh, squatting and so on and so forth. But now that it's empty, it definitely is. So they made some recommendations on how we can harden that facility but not boarded up to be offensive to the neighborhood. So we're in the process of scoping that right now internally. That'll include fencing installation, security upgrades and safety upgrades. It's really doing the bare minimum that we can do while trying to protect it until we make a long-term decision, but also trying to honor the community and the neighborhood around it. We want this to turn into a derelict facility that just attracts problems for the neighbors. And how much is, is that, John? We don't know yet. We're just starting the conversations okay. on the scoping on this one. Okay. okay. You know, the biggest thing, the biggest cost on this pie, honestly, is going to be the fencing. The, the recommendation that we're going to make is that we go with like a decorative wrought iron fencing, because if we put chain link fencing around this, what it's going to do to the home values and everything in the neighborhood is really going to be, it's going to be a big hit for them. So, and the reality is, is even if we choose to rebuild at Oregon and Russell, that's several years away at a bare minimum. So we need to do something to protect that facility now. Yeah. And I assume that includes you, landscaping to keep the weeds down and everything. Yeah, it's just continuing to, to we, we support it now through our landscaping, through our grounds crew, and we would continue to do that just like we have Oxford since we've closed Oxford up on the hill. Uh, and with that, that is the entire presentation. I promised you brevity and I think I delivered on that this evening. Yeah, you really did deliver. Um, it, I'm just looking at the agenda. But, but it's dark where Ty is now. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
<laughs> I'm sitting in the dark. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's one more that the update on the move to the Richmond facility, right? Yeah, just letting you know that we're pretty much done. Um, it was a Herculean effort that honestly, everybody on this call had such a huge hand in, right? I mean, Ty, Julie, you guys were great in supporting us. Shanita, she found me the money no matter what it took, right? All my POs were ready, everything was done, but there was just a lot of nuances that Shanita dealt with that I, I don't know that I could have done it without her. And Van Pelt really stepped up. Van Pelt stepped up, they jumped in, they managed the move. Um, Prachi, who you guys know, she's not on the call this evening. Prachi was amazing. I never want to actually work for Prachi watching her work those movers. She is a hard person to work for. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we had team, we had, I think, a team of about 25 movers. And, you know, you got to realize we're moving out of a facility that we've been occupying for over 100 years. And they oh, really wow. came out and they performed and it was great. Nutrition Services is happy. Maintenance has a wonderful facility. We're still waiting. There is about 10,000, actually about 13,000 square feet of the facility that's ours as well, that's still occupied by a tenant. He has till September 15th to move out. The side where he is, is the bulk of the offices. So we're, the folks who have offices there are kind of crammed into some small rooms. It's not the best living conditions, if you will, but they know that better, better conditions are on the horizon. Shanita and I have already been working together to figure out offices. She's going to be procuring all the FF&E for all those offices. Um, and yeah, we know that we're going to be there for a minimum of five years. Um, the reality is, is we'll probably be there longer. So I just wanted to update you guys, but really take a minute to thank everybody on this call, including you, Ty and Julie, for the support that you've given us with this. Well, thanks for the Herculean. Effort. Yeah, well, thank yeah, really. Thank you. Both. Thank you all. Yeah. Um, that's great. That's great. Um, I guess that's the end, although I had a question about scheduling, which was to ask whether it, it would be possible for the meeting on the 18th, which is right now scheduled from 5 to 6.30, right? Would it be possible to start at 4.30 or is that not possible? If it's not, it's fine, but I just wanted to check. Uh, you know what? I left my... Uh, oh, here, hold on. Let me... And while she's looking, um, John and, and your staff would... Sorry, I can make that work on our end. I can absolutely make that work on our end. That's not a problem. Let's let, let's give Julie. Apologies, I've got a board meeting that goes till five. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, I'm gonna have the same. Oh. You went to mute. We Ty. lost you, Ty. Wait, am I? What about now? Now we can hear you. Can't see you anymore, but we can oh, see you. I don't know what happened. I'm in safe driving mode, even though I'm just sitting on a bench. But um, anyway, oh, that one, I'm going to have a hard stop at six. So we really will need to keep that one to an hour if possible, if, uh, even better, a little and, bit. Less. And if we've got, you know, uh, I will check later in like the week prior, which is next week, I guess. Right. Um, if I think my meeting will end early. And then I'll ping you guys and we can move the meeting up to 4.30. But right now it's scheduled from three to five. I appreciate okay, I mean, the advance request for brevity. Usually I get it the same day. So it's not a problem. <laughs> we'll definitely make it work. Okay, thank you. And I mean, hopefully well, there, won't, there might not be too big an agenda since it's only two weeks from now. Yeah, that's correct. Um, okay, well, I appreciate it. Um, all right, oh, I guess that's it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, right. take care everybody. Thank you everyone. Yep, bye. Bye.